Hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. On this video tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how you can make some ruffled tea towels that are adorable and that are washable. Uh, now that doesn't mean I would ask my husband to clean out the coffee pot with these, but we could actually use them and wash them and use them and wash them. And I've actually washed these. So I'm super excited to know for sure that this works. It's gonna be a way to make these with absolutely no sewing. Uh, you don't need a sewing machine to do this. All you're gonna need is a low temperature glue gun and I'm using, my low temperature glue gun is a um, Sherbonder and I'm using the fabric sticks from Sherbonder and these are washable. So for this project, I definitely am gonna recommend that you use uh, your hot glue in a low temperature, because you could get burned during this project very easily, but use the fabric version of your glue sticks. So let's jump in and get started. All right, um, I have a variety of tea towels from all different places. The majority of the ones that I have used come from Walmart. And my favorite ones are these. They're in the craft department. They're next to the embroidery hoops and embroidery floss and all that kind of stuff. Um, what we're using to, that, that's what these two are. Okay, which I'll show you up close, these two. But for this one, it's a little bit narrower and I'm thinking it's this kind which I picked these up at um, Joann's, but I feel like maybe I've gotten these at Walmart or at Hobby Lobby before. In any case, you can use whichever tea towels you want for this project. And we're also going to be using some really cute fabric strips that come from Walmart. I just picked these up this last week. They're with the jelly rolls with all the quilting little fabric squares. What do they call those things? Uh, I'll remember and then I'll tell you. Um, but there's all these little, in this same row, There's that's where the strips of fabric are. That's what they call them. I'll show you the box. And they're meant for quilting. They were not very expensive. They're already cut out and they're long. <laughs> so it's just super easy peasy and they have a bunch of different kinds that all have fabrics that sort of coordinate so that's what we're going to be using today um, the strips that I got are this brand again they're from Walmart you could use ribbons too if you want but we're using fabric strips create it is the brand and this says it has 20 pieces and I think it was around six or seven dollars for all of this. So I haven't even gotten into this second roll. Look how cute these fabrics are. Okay, let me put that out of the way. What we're gonna be using today are these. We're gonna be using this one and we're gonna be using this one. Okay. And I'm gonna get my ironing board out because I'm gonna show you how to iron and everything. Um, let me see if I can quickly lay down my project supply list. It tells you where, where to get the tea towels and everything. Where am I? Okay, just a second. And it's labeled uh, Ruffled Tea Towel Project Supplies. It's just gonna be pinned, so it should be the top comment that you see. Okay, so I did two different styles of ruffles for these different projects. This one is what we're gonna do again today. This is a ruffle that you make by folding and pleating the fabric. Can you see that? I can't ever figure out where I am. This is what it looks like underneath. It's really pretty neat. Um, it doesn't look like a crummy 
uh, hot glue project and then I used some white and blue ribbon on this one and then I used this adorable stencil from Magnolia that says season everything with love and I used navy blue ink and then the turquoise ink because it goes with kind of the colors that were in, were in this ruffle so that's what kind of ruffle that is that's what we're going to be making today this one is a ruffle that I just did a running stitch with a needle and some thread and then I glued it down and these both go all the way across the bottom. So I glued down the ruffle and then I uh, made a fold with this other fabric and put it over the top and then I used this adorable Fresh Flowers Flower Market Trek stencil with navy blue, turquoise, and orange ink. And uh, you guys need to know, I'm not even kidding, that I made these yesterday. I heat set them this morning. I washed them this morning. Just on regular cycle, not on super hot. My washing machine doesn't do that automatically. It was just a regular cycle. There were some other tea towels in there. There was a beach towel in there. And then I dried them in my regular old dryer and nothing fell off. And because I heat set the stencil, look how vibrant the colors are. So this is, this is an awesome project. I'm really excited to know that the glue is gonna hold up to being washed. That is good to know. Okay, so we're gonna start with this tea towel right here. And I'm going to look before I get started to make sure that I'm working on the front of it. And so this is gonna be the front, and before we do that, we're gonna do our fabric. We're gonna make one pleated ruffle and then a band to go over the top. And you don't have to have a little mini ironing board, but I do so much ironing for my craft projects <laughs> that I actually have one here in my craft room. Okay, so the green here is gonna be the bottom ruffle. Let me move this out of the way while I get it started so I don't burn myself. And I'm planning to just fold it in half and I'm gonna use my little magnolia mister to spray some water on here that'll just make it stay nicer. Okay, so we're gonna fold this in half. And I think you guys can see, okay. There are, if there are comments in your way, you should be able to swipe them either left or right or up or down and they should go away. So the biggest part of this project is folding and ironing your, your little fabric strips so you are ready to go. If you can't get the fabric strips, you can just use plain old fabric. And I don't think it needs to be any particular brand. You could also use ribbon, and so long as you use the fabric glue, you'll be able to wash it. And the ink from Magnolia with your stencil part, you should be able to wash it just fine. And I'm gonna try not to hum, but that's what I usually do when I'm ironing, so if I do, <laughs> someone tell me. My, my oldest son has a bedroom right up above this room. And sometimes he'll come down and say, Mom, what are you humming? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just humming because in general I'm happy. Uh, anyways, as you guys are hopping on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you have any questions along the way, the way, feel free to sprinkle all that normal stuff. Okay, so with this one, we're gonna create a band. And we want all of the, um, the edges to be folded in. So I'll show you, let me just get this started and then I'll show you what I'm saying. So I'm starting one side, I folded it in just a little bit, and then we're going to fold the other side. You could 
use spray starch. Uh, I just don't happen to have any. But if you have spray starch, I think that would probably be even make this project even easier. We're going to do this whole entire thing, even though this tea towel is narrower than the other ones that I did, and we probably won't need all of it. We might as well do it all. Yeah, if I had spray starch, I, that's, I would be using it. But I don't tend to iron a lot, do you guys? Okay, I was going to tell you this famous quote. Did you know that you can never be too young, too rich, too skinny, or have too many tea towels? The last part is mine. The first part was some, somebody famous. I can't even remember who it was. But I really feel that way, that you can never have too many tea towels, especially cute ones that you can, you know, hang up on the oven door or use them a little bit to decorate. These are completely functional, though, what we're making. I'm going to hold this up in just a second. I know it's not exciting to watch me iron, but you're going to not even believe how easy this comes together. So stay with me. We're almost there. Don't worry if you're a little bit narrower in one spot versus others. It honestly does not matter at all. Okay, I'm going to put my iron over here. My ironing board back on the floor. And let me show you what I have got going right here. So this is the full strip. And I have just folded both sides in. Can you guys see that? Does that make sense? This is going to be the little band, and then this is going to be the ruffle. For the ruffle, I essentially just took my fabric and folded it in half and ironed it. Okay, you are going to need some pins, and you are going to need something to be gluing on. So I am going to disconnect my iron so I can get this clear over there. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to pick which side is the front, because that's the side you want to do. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark exactly what is the center just by folding it in half. Right there, that pinches the center. So I'm just putting a pin in it so I know. And then I'm gonna mark what is the half between each one of those halves. So this, this would be the fourth. And this will help you. We're doing this pleated type of a ruffle. This will make it super easy if you have this done in advance. When I was doing mine, you know, a lot of times um, I try to always figure out my crafts and make sure they're going to work before I do them live. And with this one in particular, I wanted to make sure that when I washed it, that it would still be good. And it was. But a lot of times I kind of, I'm kind of figuring things out as I'm going along, <laughs> you know. Um, okay, so we're going to figure out exactly what is our half. It's right here. And I kind of like it when the ruffle is up a little bit from the bottom of the tea towel. But, but let me mark, let me just put a pin in this and then I'll come close and explain what I'm talking about. Okay, on this one, you can see that I didn't put the ruffles all the way down at the bottom or the band. And same, I think, with this one. No, nope. yeah, with this one I did the same. See how um, this is the pleated thing that we're going to do, and then it's not all the way at the bottom. 
I kind of like that look. If you do too, then that's just what you want to have in mind as you're getting started. Okay, and I am going to just put a blob of glue right here. I'm sticking this into it. Okay, and then we're gonna take, figure out what is the halfway with this on each side. You could also measure. And by the way, if you have a sewing machine, you can do this exact same project. It might be a little bit easier, but you can totally do this project with a sewing machine. Okay, and so I'm gonna just, I'm not gonna start my ruffle all the way out to the edge. I'll show you what I'm talking about in just a minute. But I'm gonna put down a little blob of glue and push this into it. And then I'm gonna take the halfway and put it down and put it into the glue. I hope you guys can see okay, I think you can. Need some more glue. All right, and if you're just joining me, we're making ruffled tea towels that you can wash with no sewing machine or sewing. We're using low temperature hot glue. And for this project, I think it's important that you use the glue that is designed for fabric because you're going to want to be able to wash your tea towels. You're not going to want to make tea towels that you can't ever wash. Okay, let's do the same thing with this other side. Let's put the end all the way at the end. And then let's put the half at the half. Okay, and this is what we have right now. You can see that the ruffle is attached like in four spots. Don't worry about all the glue strings. We'll clean that up at the very end. You see what I mean? So now we're just going to decide how do we want to fold it. And we're going to go, I think it's, well, it's up to you how you want to fold it. Do you want to fold it towards the center or do you want to fold it away? I think I'm going to, just thinking here, I'm going to fold towards the center. And if they're not all exactly the same distance apart, it does not matter one single bit. So I put down a band, and then I'm putting a blob on top of it. That's going to hold my um, pleat. And then I'm going to glue this down and go just a little bit further. Let me do one more, and then I'll show you, I'll show you specifically what I'm talking about. Do my little pleat right there. When you're all, all done, you can come back and add more glue. I have to pleat that this way. Nope, I don't want to do it that way. I can do it this way. Okay, let me just assure you guys something. The very top of what you're gluing down is not going to show because we're going to put the band over the top of that edge. So I just um, took my fabric a little ways over, folded it, glued it down, and then glued it uh, each pleat down. Does that make sense? I hope it does. It's, seriously, this is not brain 
So this is not brain surgery. Um, it's pretty basic. And every time you make one, you're going to learn something, you know, that you might want to do different the next time. Each time I make one, I get looser and looser with being exactly, you know, the same spacing. If you wanted to run um, one of those running stitches with a needle and thread and then dry it up so it was all ruffly, you could do that too. have right now and there's a million and one glue strings on it and it does not look great right now but it will shortly so I'm putting down a band band of glue and pushing my thing into it then I'm just pleating my fabric over the top just a little bit and you have to glue underneath the pleat to hold the pleat down and then you want to hold glue the part that is inside of the pleat and then you're going to glue it onto the tea towel and go a little bit further and do the exact same thing over and over and over and if you find that your spacing wasn't good it really doesn't matter you can just force a pleat if you need to which is what i might have to do here What do you guys think about this project? Ah, oh, Debbie, you're so, oh, or Misty says you'll love the stuff Heidi does. Oh, thank you. Okay, so here is three quarters of our tea towel finished. Now I'm just gonna quickly whip out the other side and I will get pictures up close. And we're gonna go back after we're done then and we're gonna look underneath our pleats and see are there any big areas that we need to add more glue. And if they are, we're just gonna do that. This is a project where I could see you getting, you know, pretty angry hot glue burns. So I so seriously recommend that you use a low temperature hot glue gun for this. Do the inside of that one. Yes, I did. Sometimes the last little pleat is hard. Well, my glue is dry already, so I'm gonna have to do some more in there. So 
So then you can take a second to look at all of your pleats and see, did you have enough glue on each one of them? Do you need to add just a teeny bit more up at the top? pull up the glue strings and then we're going to look at this close up and I'm going to show you what the underneath looks like and what you're looking for to glue down there. This is hard to explain but it's not hard to do. So I hope I'm not making it more complicated than what it really is. Okay, here is our ruffle and if you look underneath it this is what you're gonna see. And we're just looking to see, you can see how it's all just fold, 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 fold. We're looking to see, are there any big areas where it's open and not attached? If there are, we wanna just put some more glue into it. And if you have a few spots like this, where you glued out too far, don't worry, because it's gonna be covered up. Okay, let me look at my underneath real quick. I did a pretty good job. I want to point out is that I chose, this is up to you, I chose not to go all the way outside to the edge and also I chose not to have my ruffle go all the way down to the bottom of the tea towel. But that is completely personal preference. Okay, now what we want to do is take our little band that we ired both sides in, and we're gonna, this is a much shorter uh, tea towel, so I'm gonna look and see where is the cutest point on the fabric that I have, and I think the cutest point that I'm gonna want to have in the center is this right here. Do you guys see that? Right here. So, and that might mean that I have to waste a little bit of my fabric, but I'm okay with that. And then this part is so super easy, super, super, super easy. Okay, so I'm gonna glue a band for the bottom part first. And I wanna make sure I get this in the center, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. And then we'll lift it up and do the other side. And I just got my thumb in that hot glue which if it had been real hot glue, that would have been really painful. Right now it's just annoying because now I have glue strings everywhere. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning and I'm just gonna run a band of glue right along the edge and then I'm gonna push this into it and then we'll do another row up higher. And I hope you guys are not bored out of your minds. I know, I hate the you know, this is a little tedious to show you how to do it. But it's really not hard at all. So I want you to see the whole thing and see where I made mistakes, where I messed things up, that kind of thing, so that you don't have to do that. And I am going to like make a little hem almost on the end here where I'm just gonna tuck a little bit under and glue it down. Okay, 
So this is what we have right now. Oops, having a hard time. I haven't glued the top part on. I've just been gluing right along the edge and putting a little bit of glue just up from the edge of the bottom plate. Let's see how long we're gonna need this to be so we can cut it off before we get there. And it might be smart to go ahead and fold this over now to make that little hem. So I'm not trying to do it when I'm at the edge. Okay, so I'm putting a band of glue right along the top of the pleats and a little bit just above it. And then we're pressing our little band into it. Easy, easy, easy peasy. Okay, but now we have to do the top, and that's easy as well. Turn around, face me. Just peeking underneath and kind of getting an idea of where is my edge. We can come back and add more glue if we need to. I do have a really fun faith stencil that we're going to use in these colors. So I love this green. I had this, um, these jelly rolls is what most quilters call the strips. I had these exact same ones last year and I used them a lot. Uh, but then, maybe it was more like 16 months ago, but then COVID hit and all the Walmarts were completely wiped out of fabric because people were making mask, masks. So I thought, well, I'm never gonna get that cute fabric again. And then this year, boom, I was going into the craft section and I saw it and I just grabbed it because I remembered how much I loved it last year. Okay, we're almost there. And there we go. A super duper cute, easy ruffled tea towel that's gonna be washable. Now let's go on and do the decoration, which is the fun part. And I will spend some time after I'm all finished pulling all these glue strings off. that we would use this one because this is such a cute stencil. With God, all things are possible, Matthew 19, 26. And you can see <laughs> that this stencil has been loved. I have used this so many times, so I'm not gonna fuzz it before I use it and the back is labeled. I'm not gonna fuzz it because that's just completely unnecessary. Let's remember exactly where our center point is. And I'm going to get some paper towels to put underneath. Because, and notice that I don't have this end of it folded under there because it would go through this kind of a tea towel and you'd have blobs of ink on the other side that would look messy of your tea towel and you do not want that. So I have two layers of paper towels. And... I'm good to go. Okay, now I need to think. We are going to be using Magnolia ink, and I got out all the colors that I thought would be fun. They have this awesome pumpkin ink. The inks, by the way, have white lids, and the inks are for fabric and ceramics. 
and they have to be heat set. So when you're doing it on a fabric, you're gonna let it dry, and then you're gonna take your iron and a piece of parchment paper. You're gonna set your iron on whatever temperature your fabric will tolerate. I usually do cotton. And then I'm just putting a parchment paper in between my iron and the, and the dried ink that's on my project. And you can go over for three or four minutes and then flip your towel over and do the back side. And with ceramics, you're going to put your ceramics in a cold oven, turn it on to 300, 350, leave it in, that, let it come up to the temperature from cool inside your oven, let it, let it cook for 35, I mean, you could do even an hour if you wanted. Turn your oven off, let your ceramics come back to regular room temperature before you take them out of the oven. And then that's how you heat set on ceramics. So this, these little tabs work for both ceramics and fabric. Isn't that cool? Okay, so I also have this color, which is called Magnolia Green. I love this one. And then this one is called Turquoise. And then I have a navy blue. And I don't look like I'm centered, am I? I'm gonna pull out a ruler which I did finally find it, six and a half. I can go over just a smidge. And that was probably unnecessary to fix that, but okay. So let me think. The color that I wanna bring out the most is this green from the ruffle below. So I think I'm gonna do these little flowers in turquoise and then the, the greenery stuff around them in green. And I'm looking for my, um, these things, my paper squeegees are so great for this kind of a project. Which if you don't have these yet and you're doing a lot of stencils, they come a pack of five. They help you get into the really narrow spots. They are great. And then I'll be using just some littler squeegees that I've cut up. Okay, so let's start with that and then we'll move on. Or we could do the flowers in orange. Let's do the flowers in orange. And those are gonna take just a itty bitty bitty amount. There's one. I'm just pushing this ink through the holes on my stencil using my little paintbrush squeegee. I'm just doing the flowers in orange and then we'll do all the greenery in the magnolia green color. To me, this is the really fun part. I mean, I think it's fun to figure out the ruffles and all that, but for me, the creative part of doing this stenciling is so super fun. Okay, I think I got all of my flowers. And let's do the green, and I'm gonna try to use just a little squeegee. One of these. This is a, a small cut apart squeegee that I've cut into four pieces. And I'm thinking, you know what? I might need one of those little ones. Well, maybe I can do this. So this will take, 
probably a couple of hours to thoroughly dry and then you would heat set it. All right, there's the grain. Let's do the big words, God, things, and possible in this turquoise, and then the smaller words in the dark blue. And when you're working with ink on fabric, you want to get your surface thoroughly covered, and then you want to move on. Don't keep going over and over and over it because a lot of times you're pushing too much of the ink that you're trying to stencil your project with through the holes and, ooh, I almost <laughs> got where I wasn't supposed to be, and it has nowhere to go, so it just kind of spreads out. And then you end up with something that looks really fuzzy and not great. We're going to peek once we get this all covered and we're going to make sure that we got everything. I think I'm going to do the, the citation to um, Matthew in green. And I know you guys have been commenting and I haven't really been uh, answering. I'm so sorry. But as soon as I hop off, I will sit down and I will gladly answer all of your questions. Um, I did put a whole bunch of links down below in case you want to go look. Okay, let's do the um, navy and then we'll come back to the green. I think this is called Old Glory Blue, something like that. These little pots last forever, in case you're wondering. And you don't have to break up your stencils like this. You could do it all in one color. I just thought we'd do something different just for fun. Um, if you're brand new to stenciling, don't make it difficult on yourself. Keep it as simple as possible. Okay, and let's do down here in the green. And then we'll peek. take a little peek. Make sure I don't have any ink on my fingers. Okay, that T in width needs a little bit more. Perfect. And the all those letters could use a little bit more. A little spot right here. Okay. Oh, it's, you guys, this is absolutely adorable. Oh my gosh. If I was at a, um, a gift shop or something, I would be inclined to buy this tea towel because it is that cute. Look at that. With God, all things are possible. Matthew 19, verse 26. And it goes 
great with the colors on this tea towel. So let me set it aside. And um, let me just put these other tea towels that I did before in front of you. And if you just hopped on, I would encourage you to go back and watch this from the beginning so that you can see all the instructions. Um, we used tea towels that were from Walmart. We used uh, fabric strips that were from Walmart. We used um, the special glue, which is Sure Bonder is the brand that I use, and it's fabric glue. And I think that I got mine at Hobby Lobby, but I pretty much think that you can also pick that up at Walmart. And then we used the Magnolia ink and some Magnolia stencils. And I got some other ones out that I wanted to show you that I thought would be super cute for tea towel projects. This is one of my all-time favorite ones, and I'll show you why. This is the one that says Lev Blooms Here, and then it has all the little fabric pieces. And this is what I did with it. I have this sitting here in my craft room. We made this a while ago. But look how absolutely adorable that stencil is. So I think it would be super cute to do on a tea towel. Um, I also got out all of these Proverbs 31 stencils would be great. Her children rise up and call her blessed. The teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She is clothed in strength and dignity. Obviously, I've used this one one or 20 times. This one, wait, that's what this one said. She is clothed with strength and dignity. And this, this one says she is far more precious than jewels. I think all of those would be adorable. Um, I also, the, here's the little truck. Uh, this is a set that I think is great for tea towels. I use this on one of them. Season everything with love. And then the other piece of it says baked with love. So you get those two pieces together. And then they have some really cute coffee stencils. But first, coffee. Coffee is my love language. These are super cute. And there's a ton more. Yeah, uh, if you just go uh, follow my link to the stencils, you can look through those and uh, see what appeals to you. But anyways, I hope you like this project. These have both been washed and dried. And look at them. Not only are my ruffles or pleats and ribbon still there, but also the stenciling that I did with ink yesterday is still there. And it's still there great. And I probably wouldn't iron these tea towels, but when they are dry, pull them out of the dryer quickly. Don't let them sit there for a day. And then just push your push your ruffles down, you know, and lay it out flat or fold it, and you're good to go. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, if you decide to make some of these tea towels with ruffles of your own creating with whatever you have on hand, I would love to see pictures. So hop over to that special group that I set up for us to share pictures of our crafting. It's dreamy space DIY. So it's dreamy and then there's a space and then DIY. If you haven't joined that group yet, you should join it because I tell you what, you guys are, you guys are amazing and the crafts that you share over there, I'm like, wow. I mean, seriously. Um, if you're gonna join though, it's gonna ask you a couple of questions. Do you promise to be nice? <laughs> Do you promise that you won't use this group as a place to sell whatever or promote whatever it is that you might have going on? And then do you promise that you won't share other crafters videos there? Which people say yes, and then almost every day somebody breaks that rule and posts a, a video of somebody else there. And then I get 100 questions about it. So those are just the three things to please don't do. And then as soon as we say yes, you can join that group, you wanna just click on the photos button and you just wanna scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll 
and see all the amazing things that people have done over there and share pictures of your crafts too. All right, I've talked long enough. Hope you liked these projects. I think they turned out pretty darn cute. You can take a screenshot if you would like. I'm gonna hop out of the picture and I will get pictures and I will um, put those here in the comments, including the one that we just did, which let me pick that up and hold it. I'll just be gentle. This is the one we made live. And if you didn't get to see the whole thing, feel free to go back to the beginning and watch the whole thing on replay. Um, make sure you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming. Smash some hearts or some thumbs if you want Facebook to serve you what I have coming up next. That seems to help. And I will, oh, and thank you guys, oh my gosh. Thank you so much for the stars. I, I really appreciate that, that's so super kind of you. So do a little this or a little this Say something to me in the comments. If you have a question or you want a direct link, let me know. And I will see you guys tomorrow for some more craft projects that are going to be quick. They're going to be easy. You don't have to be an expert crafter or an artist to do these projects. They're going to be um, sometimes a little bit unusual. Like I, I like to do kind of different things. Um, they're going to be almost always faith, family, or flowers focused and they're going to be affordable those are my criteria for everything i do here so if you want to see that do a this or a this and make sure you've liked and followed diy dream okay have a wonderful rest of your day thank you for joining me Okie dokie, see you later, thanks for watching.